So we have had some exposure to the intuitive definition of what a limit is. In this section, we're going to actually start evaluating limits using what are known as the limit laws. Limit laws are how to evaluate limits. Not approximate, <clears throat> not speculate, but how to actually evaluate these limits. So what we're going to do is assume for a moment that the limit as x approaches a of f of x and the limit as x approaches a of g of x both exist. Under the assumption that they exist, what we're going to do is talk about how functions can interact with each other. So for example, the sum law. If I'm taking the limit as x approaches a of a sum of two quantities, f of x plus g of x, then I can take their individual limits and then add those together. What you have on the left-hand side of this equation is the limit of a sum, and what you have on the right-hand side is a sum of the limits. So the limit of a sum is the same as the sum of the limits. Not meant to technically evaluate the limit, but to get it into a more basic form where it can be evaluated. The same holds true for differences. So if I take the limit of a difference of functions, this is the same as taking the difference of the limits of the functions. There's also the constant multiple law. So the constant multiple law says if you're taking the limit of a constant times some function, then you can take the constant and move it outside of the limit, keeping it as a coefficient. The product law would apply to a product of two functions. It says that if you take the limit as x approaches a of f of x times g of x, then you can express this as the limit as x approaches a of the first function times the limit as x approaches a for the second function. Same holds true for quotients. If I take the limit as x approaches a of a quotient of two functions, that's like saying apply the limit as x approaches a to the numerator and apply the limit as x approaches a to the denominator. Now this assumes that the denominator is not equal to zero. In the event that it is equal to zero, we have another way to get around that, and we'll talk about that in a future video. There's the power law for limits. Power law for limits states that if I'm taking the limit as x approaches a of something raised to a power, I'm not sure I used the right number of parentheses there, that's okay. That's the same as saying take the limit of the function and then raise it to that power. So in the event that you have to do a limit and a power, the order in which you do them is irrelevant. You can do them in whatever order you want. And finally, the root law <clears throat> says that if I'm taking the limit as x approaches a of the nth root of f of x, then I am allowed to take the nth root of the limit as x approaches a of f of x. And this assumes no domain issues. For example, if I'm taking an even indexed root, like a square root or a fourth root, I need to know that the thing under the radical is not negative. 
So all of these will manipulate your limits, but they won't actually evaluate the limit for you. There are two evaluation laws that we can make use of. The two evaluation laws say that if you take the limit as x approaches a of x, now according to the intuitive definition, we're saying as x approaches a, what does x approach? Well, I just answered that question. It approaches a. This is something that you can use to actually evaluate a limit and turn it into a numerical value. And finally, if I take the limit as x approaches a of a constant, well, constants don't change. So it doesn't matter what x approaches, the function value is not going to change. Now, do be aware that a constant term versus a constant multiple can make this process a lot shorter than it needs to be. Now, if you were to take number one and combine it with the power rule, then there is another limit law that you can create. We'll call this number three, despite the fact that the book doesn't have it in here. So if you combine the, uh, this evaluation law with the power law and say take the limit as x approaches a of x raised to the nth power, this is going to be a raised to the nth power. Now I'll show you in the next video how to actually apply all of these limit laws to a given situation. The big question that you need to ask is when you're taking the limit of an expression, what is the last thing that you would do according to the order of operations in that expression? Whatever that operation is, that's going to be whichever one of these limit laws you're going to want to apply. I will demonstrate that thusly.